G'day everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. So the AFL Grand Final Week is finally here and to pass a bit of time throughout the week, in today's video I'm going to be going over and trying to make the best AFL side of 2022, but it must feature a player from every single AFL club. So therefore, since it's 18 clubs, we'll go over and build the best team with 18 plays, excluding the interchange bench. If you're going to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, that'll be much appreciated. And let's get into today's video. Rightio, so how we'll go over this is quite simple. We'll go through every AFL club and nominate one player and put it into a team here. So I've currently got a blank list. So yeah, the team that I'm wanting to build it wants to be quite realistic, sort of similar to the All-Australian side where we want our players in positions they've played in and we want to be realistic with the positions we want. We don't want to have like, let's say, too tall of a forward line. We don't want to have too many inside midfielders. We want to try and build a balanced side. So let's get into it. Kicking off with the Adelaide Crows. And I've chosen Geordie Dawson. Great year he's had coming across from the Sydney Swans. A very versatile option if we were to put him in the side. And because he's played halfback predominantly, it is a no-brainer to put him in the halfback spot. And can play high up the ground. Very good kick too. Now moving on to the Brizzy Lions. And I've gone with, of course, Lockie Neal. Very unlucky not to take home Charlie in the Brownlow medal count the other day ago. Uh, but, you know, he is still one of the best midfielders in the competition. So good in the stoppage. Um, a very good endurance runner too, and he is the perfect rover in this side, so we'll put him in the rover spot. Now for Carlton, and there's plenty of options I could go for here. Maybe Jacob Wittering in a key back spot. Brownlow medalist Paddy Cripps, of course. Maybe Sam Walsh on a wing, but I've gone with Charlie Kerno and going to be putting him at full forward. You can't go wrong with the Coleman medalist. An insane year he has had. Kicked a lot of bags, and, and I'm really keen to see how he will go next year. Recovered just so well from injury. And uh, yeah, terrific year he's had. Now for Collingwood, and Collingwood are one of those sides where there's just a real lot of solid amount of players in every position. So, you know, it's up for debate who we could go for here. Maybe we could go for Nick Dacos across the halfback line. But um, for me, I do have to go with Josh Dacos. Very unlucky not to make the All-Australian side. And of course, we'll be putting him on a wing. He's just one of those players, Dacos, if you just carefully look at how he plays, he's just an elite player. Very, very good endurance runner and just a classy ball user too. And in this side, he would just be a perfect linksman between defense and attack. So we'll put him in on the wing. Now for Essendon and a few options we could go for here. Peter Ryan, he kicked over 50 goals this season, let's not forget. And a bottom four side, so could go for him there. Maybe Jordan Ridley in a back pocket, but for me, the best and fairest Sure to be winner, I think he is, of course. Uh, yeah, Zach Merritt, uh, going to be putting him on the wing. Of course, he is a lot more of an on-baller, but considering he did make the All-Australian on a wing spot last year, and he does play a bit of wing from time to time uh, in, in centre bounces, I will be putting him on the wing. Uh, yeah, just an elite play, of course, for the Dons, and yeah, no-brainer, really. Now for Fremantle, and the player I've nominated is, of course, Liam Matthews Trophy winner, Andy Brayshaw. Got to be having him in the side. The best two-way runner midfielder in the competition. Looking in the midfield at the moment, we have Lockie Neal, just that gut, just that stoppage beast that can go forward and hit up a teammate. And then now with Andy Brayshaw in the centres, we do have the accountability of him. Uh, you know, just, oh, of course, that a classy ball user too. Gut runner, um, just brilliant in defence and attack. Now for Geelong, and few options I could go for here. Maybe go for Tom Stewart in the back pocket. Um, maybe Tom Hawkins in a forward pocket. But for me, um, one of the most valuable players in the competition. Jeremy Cameron got to be putting him in the side and he slots right into the center half forward position really versatile forward can play is a bit of a small forward can play really high up the ground so I feel like him as the center half forward leading out playing up the ground would be a perfect fit in this side now for the Gold Coast Suns and I think many of you will probably be thinking I'm going to be going for two Camilla here which is definitely fair enough but I'm going to be going for Jared Witts I think he's the best ruckman um, apart from Max Gorn in the competition very good on the hitouts. Um, you know, around the ground, he isn't as good as like your Gorn and a few other uh, ruckmen in the competition. But you know, top outs wise, he's still very, very elite. And considering of team needs, there's a few other teams that I prefer to have a midfielder than Tuke Miller. But yeah, uh, still Wits, sensational ruckman he's been this year. He goes in my ruck spot. Now for the Giants, and a few nice options I could go for here. Could go for Canelio, who's put in a solid year. Um, could have maybe gone for Josh Kelly on a wing if it wasn't for Zach Merritt. But for me, um, just still an underrated player, uh, Sam Taylor. I think um, he was very, very deserving of being in the All-Australian side this year. Again, one of those plays that don't, not really many people think, um, you know, haven't really watched him play. Uh, but if you really take the time to watch some Giants games, this guy's just impressive. One-on-one, -on -one, he's just absolutely insane. And I am going to be putting him in the centre-half back spot. Um, yeah, just one of the best key backs this year. Very good on the one percenters too. 
Sam Taylor in the side at centre halfback. Now for Hawthorne, and I have gone for probably a player that is very, very unlucky not to be in the All Australian side, James Sicily, of course, and I will be putting him in the back pocket. Still, doesn't faze me with how this guy did not be in the All Australian side. Um, he did everything right, you know, ranked number one in a lot of things. Ranked number one is the key back, uh, according to champion data too. And, you know, looking at him in the side, can play tall, can play small, very versatile defender, and very good with ball in hand. Reads the ball exceptionally well as well. Now for the Ds, and we are sport for choice here with a few Demons players. Could be going for Petrarca, maybe on a half forward line, Clayton Oliver in the coal face. But considering of team needs, I am going to be going for Stephen May, because I still think Stephen May is the best key back this year. Um, you know, it's quite a no-brainer. You know, simply the best one-on-one -on -one defender. Very good kick on him too. And he is easy shooting for being uh, the fullback in my side. Now for North Melbourne. And they are one of those few teams where they just don't really have that much talent to be in a team like this. So we really need to um, have a look at their side and think, you know, really the only option is either Jai Sinkman or Luke Davies. Uniacs, that's why I had to keep the midfielder spot open. And considering, um, well... Josh Simpkins did win in the Best and Fairest Award this year. I still think the more valuable player has to be Davies Uniac, an absolute clearance beast. And he goes straight into the On Baller Brigade. And yeah, uh, one of the best clearance players in the competition pretty much this year. Special player. And looking in the midfield, we've got Brayshaw as that, you know, kind of uh, two way runner. And then you've got Davies Uniac as that clearance beast. And then you've got that Lockie Neal as just that all round beast that kind of player, inside outside gun player. So that's my midfield looking quite complete at the moment. Now for Port Adelaide and looking at our forward line at the moment, there's a lot of forwards we still have to tick over. And of course, one player we have to do put in is Connor Rose, just a classy player he is. Moved in the midfield the second half of the season and yeah, he just went absolutely bang. So you feel like maybe Rosie could be an on-baller, but he still is a bit of a half forward player. Higher forward player usually um, is his default position and yeah, just a goal kicking midfielder that can go forward. Also a forward. Classy play, of course, and he goes straight onto my half-forward line. Now for the Tigers, and a number of options we could go for here. Maybe we could go for even Dylan Grimes or Jalen Shaw, who produced fantastic years. But for me, I have to be putting in Tom Lynch. Looking at now, it is quite a bit of a tall forward line, but, you know, three key forwards. Um, but Jeremy Cameron is a very versatile player. It is, I don't feel, too tall. But for me, Tom Lynch has to be in the side. Still kicked over 50 goals this year. Would have won the Coleman if he didn't miss out in, I think it was three or four games. Um, kicked 21 goals in the last four games, I think it was as well. Absolute superstar he was this year. And he goes into a forward pocket position. Moving on to St. Kilda now. And the player I've nominated is, well, looking at the remaining positions we've got. It is a pretty easy decision. Uh, the best and fairest winner, Jack Sinclair, won in an absolute landslide uh, as well, looking at the votes. Uh, just so good uh, in the back half. You know, reads the ball exceptionally well, plays with just acceleration burst um, and dash and takes the game on as well. And yeah, it would be a perfect fit in this side. Uh, that is very good in defense and attack. Now for the Sydney Swans and looking at a few positions here, we could maybe go for the small forward of Pathley, Isaac Heaney even on the half forward line, or maybe even like a Dame Rampy or Paddy McCartan in the back pocket. But for me, considering of the other teams we do have left, I am going to be choosing Tom Papley. Of course, one of the probably most hated players in the competition, but if you do remove the emotional attachment from Papley, he is seriously a top three small forward in the competition. A heavy, important player for the Swans. Uh, can go in the center bounces. Just an energetic player that uh, really you know, changed the game. A game changer he is. X-Factor player as well. And he goes straight into a forward pocket position. Now for West Coast, and considering their list this year and how they've gone, I think the only player we can really go for is either McGovern or Barris. And considering Barris was very close from being an All-Australian this year, I am going to be choosing him. And he goes simply straight into the back pocket, and that's the back six complete. Um, yeah, just an intercepting Frank Barris was this year. And looking at the back six, you know, we've got the three, you know, three slash four keys, but Barris and Sicily are very versatile players and can be um, quite good with ball in hand as well. And for the final team, the Western Bulldogs, we only have the half forward uh, flank position available. So a few options, to be fair, we could go for here. Um, and I have gone with Josh Dunkley. Could be maybe going with Bontempelli, but I just feel this year Dunkley's probably just been that more consistent throughout the whole season. It's a, you know, opinion. it's just my opinion. A lot of people could possibly go for Bonson Pelly, but I just think Dunkley is a uh, just a very versatile player who is a very good forward and just a hard ball getter as well. So yeah, he goes straight onto my half forward flank, and there is the team, ladies and gentlemen. So everyone, there it is. That is my best 2022 AFL side with the player from every single club. 
As I said earlier in the video, I tried to make it quite a realistic side. I didn't want to have too tall, too small of a forward line, uh, back line considering that as well. And I wanted to keep the midfield quite balanced. And going over it, you know, Stephen May uh, and Sam Taylor, two gun keys with Barris and Sicily with intercepting abilities. And then George Dawson and Sinclair um, are very good on attack and defence. Dacos, Merritt, both very good gut runners, endurance plays. Brayshaw as that, uh, you know, two-way runner. Davies Uniac, the clearance beast. Lockie Nil, just the all-round class. Wits, the very good tap-out ruckman. Then Dunkley, could go into the midfield. Uh, Cameron can play off the ground. Rosie, very versatile player too, and classy as well. Uh, Tom Papley, just for that small four uh, that we really would need in this side and can really um, turn it, turn up, turn the players up when he fires up. And then, yeah, Kerno and Lynch, uh, both very solid uh, goal getters too. So, of course, remember, fellas, this is a team without the interchange bench as well. So, everyone, there is my team. Let me know what you think of my team down below in the comments. So, everyone, thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. Uh, huge grand final week coming up. So, I just wanted to get this video out just to pass the time, sort of. And it's a cool idea as well. So, feel free to uh, maybe make your team down in the comments below. Love to hear your fellas' thoughts. So, everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching today's video. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. See you later, please.